Welcome, punters, to the Caulfield Cup. Uh, Maddie, as always, I'm joined by Maddie. How are you, Maddie? Going well, well, mate. How are you? Yeah, good as always. I almost bluffed the uh, intro and completely lost my words, but welcome, Caulfield Cup Day. How good? Oh, how good. Yes, indeed. But, um, got a little bit to live up to, old Caulfield Cup Day, after Everest and Guineas last week. That was one of the best race mates I've seen in years. I'm glad you said that. Now, I always thought the Christmas day of punting was Derby Day. Am I correct? Yeah, absolutely. Have is it is the media just renamed it to Guineas and Everest Day? The Christmas Christmas uh, Christmas Day. I, honestly, uh, I can see why because last weekend, each and every race in Sydney and Melbourne were absolutely on point. Yeah, oh, 100%. But, yeah, I just thought Derby Day still holds the um, Christmas Day. They can be the, I don't know, they can be uh, the, oh, I don't know what you'd call it. The, uh, no, that, that, the appetizer? Given the way we saw Sydney celebrate, they can be New Year's Eve. Yeah, they, um, yeah that is a good point. Yep. Um, yeah, no, good on Sydney. Put on a cracker. Um, what a race it was, the Everest. Yeah. Um, Geez, wish I win. Just stiff, wasn't it? It was, it was. And one of our very switched on committee members asked the question last week, is mm. barrier number one going to cost it? And I did say we'll find out after the race. So I was sitting on the picket fence. Um, but yes, indeed, I, I think it did. Uh, Luke Nolan couldn't really get off heels until about the 200, 250. And um, think about it, just had a little bit more kick, but Look, you can't fault to think about it. Just a, a winning horse. Yeah, it just finds a way. And um, I just, I, 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 no one expected Overpass to fall into everyone's lap that quick. Everyone was tipping it, and I was, I was dead against it. But yeah, I didn't expect it to fold up that quick. And uh, yeah, played a little bit leaderish Ram Week, uh, probably because due to the rail position on their big day. But no, nah, it was good racing. Loved it. Hundred percent. I thought, um, yeah, in secret was almost the run of the race. Uh, Zach Purton, um, I, I think, did well to actually get it into fourth. But again, just another one where the wide gate probably cost it. So yeah, unfortunately, the race shape didn't pan out for those two, um, which were the two that I were on. But um, yeah, I think in terms of the best horses finishing in the top four, we definitely got to see that. Yeah, definitely wish I win's gone to the paddock, which is no surprise for me. Um, but it'd be interesting to see if any of any of these others come down for the sprint, champion sprint. I know um Cylinder and the other three year old are going to the Coolmore. Uh so that'd be good. And I think uh Stepardi and V eight are going to the Coolmore. Interesting, uh, interesting. After, yeah, um, look, I mean, probably a good segue across onto the guineas. Um, look, the bloodbath yeah, wasn't even a bloodbath, was it? Um, I, I, I was on the corner and I, I kept on having to check my watch to see what time they're actually going to get to the home straight. <laughs> it was, um, yeah, geez, the whole day was just ups, not upsets, but just. Yeah, none of the favourites could really lob except Asfora. Mm. Oh, wow. That was very impressive. But, I mean, you, you had two 1,600-metre races being run in the last two races of the day. Yeah. Uh, and you, you'd find the Turak, they would have been 14 lengths in front of the yeah. Guinness horses. Yeah, I, I did hear that. And that, that sort of stuff I don't mind hearing because it just makes you laugh how that result actually came up because of, Benny Mallum's um, great ride of just putting putting the whole field asleep. And, yeah, no, he deserved that, Benny. He pulled everyone's pants down. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, look, it was, a, as, a, as we said, a sensational day of racing. Uh, Alligator Blood getting another group one. Um, Ayrton getting the job done. And yourself won with the pineapple as for uh, just, just dropping Uncommon James. Yeah, I still couldn't believe the price um, come race time. That was, I don't know, I, it's just one of those things that you just can't believe sometimes. And, yeah, that was a good result. Nice horse. She's a weapon at 
thousand to eleven hundred. I just don't know about twelve hundred for our spool right now. It might. I think it goes to the Manicato, so that'd be interesting. One thing mm. I will say on Guineas Day now, Ben Mallon copped a ten meeting suspension out of that Guineas ride. Um, now, if you go and watch the footage, last twenty meters, and it, this happens every spring carnival, and I still can't believe Racing Vic or the race clubs don't do anything about it. There's a lot of cameramen on the inside of the tracks, and they stand there just watching and taking photos. Now, horses are. Uh, and not weld oil machines. And if they see something that's not normal, they'll veer out, they'll get, they get spruced. And it happens every year. They stand there and we do fucking nothing about it. Are they going to do something about it when something happens like it almost did? And you can hear Benny Mellon when he get, when he was uh, interviewed, he was genuinely shitting himself after that. Not because he's caused interference, more that I think he thought he was going to fall off. And if you watch the overhead, it, the horse just, veers out now for some stupid reason they've suspended him for 10 meetings it goes on to this though of our stewards and appeals board how many have ridden in the race you, how can you suspend someone if you haven't ridden in the race now i know there's a jockey on there uh gundagoo or gun gundagoo gundagoo no not gundagoo gun but he's ridden in the race now surely they'd have a panel of Ex jockeys that have ridden in races to deliberate a sentence for the jockey because they know what the jockey would be going through and they just they just know yes suspend or not but for some reason we just no no disrespect to the stewards that we have they're doing their job but surely we've got to put a committee together of ex jockeys that suspend jockeys. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that just annoys the shit out of me. Photographers on the inside. It happened last year on Cox Plate Day. There was a guy right on the rail, and now it's happened again. So please cut it out before something happens. It's just not a good look. But that's my negative from last week. Uh, this week we're going to be doing a runner by runner preview of the Caulfield Cup. So you'll get get out in depth of what we think of each horse. Bets around the grounds, as always, the multi and pineapple of the week, which I'll hold. Uh, if you're a first-time listener, please just, uh, welcome. Hope you enjoy the show. Please subscribe to our YouTube or any podcast platform that you listen to. Thank you all that listened last week. If you if we find you plenty of winners this week or tip you right into the Caulfield Cup, please, as a good gesture, just head over to Spotify and please rate us. Um, Please rate our podcast. We'd love to grow it. And everything we do is free. No hidden paywalls. Everything is free. And we do it for the love of it. So as a little gesture, please, that's all we ask for you to do. Um, if you want to be part of the WhatsApp community, please DM me and I will get you involved. If you are writing on Spotify to get into the WhatsApp, please get on YouTube and do it because I can see the uh comments but i cannot reply for some reason so please head over to youtube or dm me on uh tiktok whatever it is that you see my ugly uh, uh, mug on and um yeah i'll put you straight through um there's no talking points because i've already ranted uh track stats now good for at the moment Hot weather today, 27. Hot again tomorrow, 27. Cool day, 22 on Saturday. But there's going to be a lot of hand watering uh, going on before race time. It will be a good three. Rails out three metres. This is quite scary because if we get a good three, the rail will be hot and leaders will be winning unless they water that inside. I hope they don't because I'm basing all my bets and throughout the day, on leaders or leaders back because they that rail will be hot. Futures ticket. Um Maddie, talk us through it. All right, mate. Uh, Cox plate. I'm gonna talk you through my Cox plate field. I think that this is going to be the starting lineup. There's 20 potential runners. I've got eleven of them in the field. And then I'll pick your brain just over the last nine to see if any of them have a chance. Zaki will be running. Alligator Blood, Gold Trip, Mr. Brightside, Romantic Warrior, Fangirl, Light Inventory Man, 
Pinstripe, Victoria Road, King Colorado, and Military Ice. Any issues with any of those? I've got an issue with King Colorado. I don't know what it's done to gain a start. I know it finished third in the Guineas or fourth. Um, it's won a group one as a two-year-old, but yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think it deserves a spot, but the rest, I think you're spot on. Yeah, I, I think it will get a run um, just for the pure fact that I'll try and have two three-year-olds in there. Oh, yeah. I get your point around uh, the rationale for horses being in the field, but Oh, I think that um, Kiramar and Houston will, will try and get it in, um, which will give them three runners with Gold Trip and also Light Inventory Man. Now, we're, of the remaining nine, I, I just want to, yes, no, maybe, uh, or maybe just a giggle if you think there's no chance. My Oberon, any chance? No. Without a fight? No, it will go straight to the Melbourne Cup. I agree. But, but if this lameness that has appeared scratches it, they may back up. That is true. Zarek. Uh, no. Alcohol free. Uh, no. I, I, I had the same reaction. Just remember alcohol free is currently 300 to 1. <laughs> Could could gain a start. No, that, that's that's the uh, very left field. Alan Kerr. No, no. View us. Yes. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Buckaroo. Yes. We've got a ticket on it. Duke the Sasa. Uh, Depending on how it goes this week, and from what I'm thinking, no. Female? No. Must Mustang Valley? Yes. Mustang Valley? Yes. Okay, interesting. Pounding? No. Sulcum? Uh, yes. She light? I would love to see it in it, but it'll be a no. The party, uh, Coolmore, it'll be in, and and Wolfie, uh, uh, yeah, n no, no, okay. So, you, you still think there's a chance that a few of these may head to a Cox Plate, yeah, yeah, and that would put, I think the yeses I've used is close to 14 runners, yeah, that's right. So, uh, we've got three spots remaining uh, on top of the 11 that I've got. Um, and interesting that if they do get a few of these horses, which you said yes to, in terms of your Juasas, your Buckaroos, um, your Mustang Valleys, King Colorado could be the one that uh, makes way for it. Yeah, yep. So in terms of live tickets, um, we've got Buckaroo. Worm, it's time to pull the trigger <laughs> because I think after come Monday, we're not going to find the same value as what we've currently got in the field. Now, you've told me right now I can get $5 yep. on Romantic Warrior. Yep. Okay. So then I've got $62.50 left of my $100. I'll be yep. putting $42.50 on it. Okay. To win $213. Yep. Uh, and then $20 on Fangirl. At $10 to win $200. So, obviously, you were very impressed by Fangirl last week. Very impressed. I, look, I, I'm a little bit nasty at myself for the pure fact that we could have got 51s uh, the week prior, which I, I did I did take a look at. I thought, no, no, we'll wait to see how it runs. And it wasn't a smart move. Anyway, we will take the $10 on offer. Yeah, 100%. And who knows? We could, we could also have Buckaroo, which we've uh, currently got around 50s. Yeah, it wasn't a bad run, Buckaroo. I just think he just got left flat, flat footed first up off the plane. It will improve, you know, all those cliches. Uh, he went better than light infantry, man, that's for sure. Yes, indeed. Yes. So, look, I'm, I'm exceptionally keen on Romantic Warrior. Oh, I thought everything we've seen since the Turnbull Stakes, um, the way that James McDonald uh, has got it running around the valley, I, I think. 
it's the horse at the top of this field and the one that I'd like to be on. Um, now, obviously, this is before barrier draws. Um, the fact that we're getting 3 three fifty wasn't really too much of a fan to see that. But now that we're getting fives, I don't think we're going to get fives for very long. No, it's a week of, weekend racing threw up so many spanners and... Um... Yeah, we I reckon we were looking at six dollars before Saturday last week, and then bright side they reckon maybe the track was too hard. Um, I know a good judge that you'd like to listen to, Matty. He has is convinced it was because of the trial that it had. It was a weird analysis, but I respect it. Um, then militarized didn't really fire, but maybe it was due to the slow. Tempo, um, yeah, geez, and then yeah, you still get five dollars romantic warrior, so I think it's a good price. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I'm quite happy to take the five dollars. Um, look, yeah, I thought Miller Trials was quite a good run. The, the race pattern just meant it had no chance of winning that race. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to a Cox Plate and runs well, but quite comfortable to be with uh, Fangirl and Romantic Warrior. I think they're the two in the race that can run a time to win this race. I can't see Militarise uh, running a time to be winning a Cox play. It might springboard with that low weight, but yeah, I'm a bit sceptical of these three-year-olds. Hey, look, a lot of this uh, comes down to what barriers some of these horses get. If Militarise draws inside, pings, goes to the lead. Uh, as you said, lightweight. We've seen that work before. Yeah, 100%. Um, Caulfield Cup, uh, it's obviously this week, no-brainer. We've spent our 100 a long time ago, and I've had a few nervous uh, days leading up and weeks and thinking I've just blown my 100. So we did have five on Back Mur at 140. He's gone. We had five on Luna Flair, gone. Uh, we had 10 on Kovalika, who's going to the Golden Eagle. Um Still gobsmacked. I still reckon it would run well in a Caulfield Cup. Um, but the remaining money, we had 25 on without a fight at 10s. It's now 8.20. I reckon that might blow come race time. I reckon we might get 12s. Valiant King, we got 16s. We had 25 on that at 13.50. Uh, I won't say much more about that. I'll let you know in my run to, runner by runner on that one. Uh, 15 on West Wind Blows at 16 is now $7.80 and 15 at 19 is on Breakup at $10. So we have taken some good prices. We just need one to salute. And to the person who on social media had a dig at us for having cracks at horses, this one's for you this week. Thank you. That's all I'll say. Um... All right, runner by runner, Caulfield Cup, 2,400 metres, Group 1. Um, I don't know what your speed map's going to be like, Matty, but I've got Goldman and Spirit Ridge leading at a solid tempo. I've got Breakup, West Wind Blows, Valiant King, all getting that perfect run. Now, wouldn't surprise me if West Wind Blows tries to hold that rail position with uh, Goldman and Spirit Ridge having to come across. So that'll be interesting what they do coming into the first corner. I've got who your mail, three wide, no cover. Right you are, Montefilia, without a fight behind them, midfield. Francesco, Guardi, Gold Trip, Sulcum, Okiki, Sushi, near the rear. Maddie, your speed map, anything similar? No, nothing uh, wildly different. One that I did note, I think Harry Coffey on non-conformist just needs to make a decision based on how it jumps from the widest gate. Does it follow? Does it track over with Goldman? Uh, we know Goldman will go forward. It's probably a good opportunity for Harry to actually track across with it because there's not a whole lot of horses just to its inside that are really going to be pushing forward until you get it to barrier number 10 with Spirit Ridge. So I think it's a good opportunity for Harry to actually be quite aggressive there uh, and follow Goldman across. But in terms of that, yeah, I think Spirit Ridge will definitely go forward. I think you'll find West Wind Blows will, and also Valley and King from Barriers number one and two will try and push up and make the most of that. Uh, probably sit one or two back as these horses cross over. Beautiful. All right. So runner by runner, we've got number one, Gold Trip. 
Benny Mallam on board, barrier 11, $5. Matty, take it away. Well, in Caulfield Cup last year was on a soft seven. Melbourne Cup last year was on a soft seven. Turnbull Stakes last two weeks ago, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, was on a good four. But we know that the, the times they ran that day were more suited to a good five. So there was definitely give in the track. Now, are we forecasting any rain whatsoever before the Caulfield Cup? Uh, it is Melbourne and it can throw up some shocking uh, weather, but no, I wouldn't have thought so. Now, I've just had a look at the extended forecast. Yep. And by next Wednesday, dropping to 15 degrees and rain. Thursday, yep. 14 degrees and rain. And Friday, very similar. I just wonder whether the stable, they took a long time to accept for this. They wanted to see how the track played on Wednesday, which I completely understand. I, I do think that they've got one eye on the Cox plate. Um, and I, I wonder if they blink. Yep. So I'm not, I'm not convinced that Gold Trip will be going around. In saying that, it's in the field. It is my equal top-rated horse within this race. So if it does get a start, it does have every chance. But uh, the feeling that I get is they may hold it for another week and they may get that soft seven track thereafter at Mooney Valley. Yep. In terms uh, of this race, though, I do have it uh, as my equal highest rated horse within the field. Worm, how did you say it? Uh, mate, I'm on similar grounds here in one particular area. It, what a win it was last start. Well, um, definitely going better than last year. Deserves to be the price it is, but I feel the horse won't run. Good three won't be good for this horse when Cox Plate and Melbourne Cups have always been its grand final. For some reason, they've shifted the goalposts here. Um, Huey was booked start of the week. Now... Now, from Monday, now Ben Mallon. So I know they probably would have had to pay for Huey's flights if he was coming. So did they just hold off and just say, no, we're not going to pay for him because we don't think it's going to run? As you said, it took right up till Wednesday mid-arvo to decide. Um, yeah, I still think they're deciding. Now, one thing I it stuck with me, M. Zara was on last start. Yes, he's committed to without a fight. But if he was convinced, he would have jumped straight off and jumped on Gold Trip. If you if you think it's going to win. Um, would have been a lot of other people lining up with without a fight. So that's how I'm looking into it. Now, also, if it does run, we know this horse has a sharp, turn, uh, sharp sprint and it is bloody lethal. Zara knows... This horse back to front. Ben Mallum goes now on board. Hasn't ridden it before. If he pulls the trigger too quick, this horse will die on its run with 150 to go. Map, map is tough and sticky. Could be amongst them and could uh, find some trouble. I'm going to take this horse on if it runs. Um, number two, without a fight, M Zara, barrier seven, $7.50. Oh, uh, well... Um... That one cup last year, uh, first up running Australia around 13th. Now across with the Freedmans, went up for the Brisbane campaign uh, for a couple of wins up there, went to the win, uh, the Underwood, I should say, running sixth. Now, I know quite a few people are quite keen on this horse. I haven't seen enough for it to, to be really featuring in my top three. Um, I know it's got enormous ability, but whether that Brisbane form translates into spring group ones, um, I haven't seen many horses been able to do that previously. And for that reason, I think it, it'll definitely be finishing in the first half of the field. Uh, but yeah, for me, I, I do have a few question marks on it. How about yourself? Um, well, we knew this horse's grand final back in the Brizzy Carnival. They mapped it. Uh, was the best run out of the Underwood, I thought. Not a bit of luck. Hit the line hard. Going to get the track conditions that suited. And I've always said I couldn't take without a fight's price for so long because it needs a good track. Gets that. 
will sit midfield. Zara sticks. That gives me confidence. Could, um, yeah, could have easily jumped off gold trip, but it didn't. Good sign. Um, back in May, back in 2022, this horse had form around Huckham over 2,400 metres. Now, I reckon he is an A-grade European who's off to stud now. Uh, can win, but reports are, uh, appears to be lame, needs reassessing on Friday. Never a good sign for me. It's a hold for me on this horse. Uh, number three, break up. Damien Lane, barrier five, nine dollars fifty. Mm. D Lane was very, very quick to take this ride. Uh, I think he's got a Melbourne Cup in mind. Now, that doesn't mean the horse can't run exceptionally well within this race. Um, look, I think it'll probably get back and be running on exceptionally well. Kind of think that run on for fourth, fifth, sixth might be where break up. Finishes up here, uh, and from there will be a perfect lead-in into a Melbourne Cup, which I'm very keen to follow the horse in. But um, for the Caulfield Cup, again, definitely in the first half of the field, but not necessarily on the podium. Did you back it now for the Melbourne? Um, we'll cross again for the Melbourne. I don't think there's much value there for the break-up for the Melbourne Cup. I think 15s, I think I saw, maybe. Yeah, okay. Look, it, it, again, if you want to have $20 on it, have 10 now and have 10 after. Yep. I um, like your thinking. Um, as we know, Japanese horse, we know how they go when they come over for our carnival. They smack us. This horse has better credentials than Murder Glass, who won the Caulfield Cup a couple of years ago. Now, I know it's probably a useless thing that, that I've just said, but looking at what Murder Glass did off a very oh, above-average prep in um, Japan, Japan, but the, I think this horse comes better. Now, I know last start it says beaten 7.8 lengths, but... This horse was three wide, no cover on a brutal tempo, suited the swoopers, beaten seven lengths by Equinox, who's probably the best horse in the world. But we're still in play with 200 metres to go. I feel 2,400 will suit better than 3,200 metres, so I'm against these thoughts there. But don't leave this horse out of your tries, your first fours. This horse can win. All right, number four, Montefilia, Blake Shin comes on for Nashville Willa, barrier nine, and you can get $15. Very quickly, interesting that Nash has decided to forego a Caulfield Cup and a Cox Plate for two very, very good rides. So it rides Hawaii 5 in a few weeks' time. Interesting. We'll keep that in mind. And fan. Um, Montefilia. Now, this horse in the hill stakes was exceptionally impressive. Um, now, what I liked about it the most, the most I liked about this is it was a soft run for it. Yes, it absolutely exploded, but it did zero work. It didn't use any petrol tickets whatsoever, and that's what I look for uh, when you look for horses who have run exceptionally well and then need to follow up. And Montefilia, after running fifth in uh, the Caulfield Cup last year, I think it uh, comes into this exceptionally well. Um, and I see it featuring within the finish. Wow. Okay. Um, coming out of the Hill Stakes, as you mentioned, went well. Uh, it was huge in last year's Caulfield Cup. But one thing I noticed, it was cuddled up for one last sprint. Just like the Hill Stakes. Yes, it might have been a little bit unlucky in last year's Caulfield Cup, but go and watch the Hill Stakes. It was cuddled up behind horses and, you know, exploded. So it, it did what it had to do, I believe, but its best racing's been when it's cuddled up. Um, will this horse be cuddled up for one last run? I don't think so. I think it'll be exposed quite early. It's a no from me. Um... Number five, Francesco Guardi, James McDonald, barrier 15, 
Mm, J Mac back on board for the first time since everyone started taking notice of this horse uh, Cox Plate Day in the Moody Valley Cup. So very interesting there. The final warm up now. Mr. Waller has said that they have been planning this for a very, very long time. All about the Melbourne Cup. So for mine, I think that they will continue that. Again, it will be a very good lead up run from Barry number 15. I think it's only got one choice. That is to go back. It's going to need to do a fair bit of work to be in the finish here. And for that reason, I'm happy to assess it further for the Melbourne Cup rather than the Caulfield. Yeah, yeah, we know the horse's grand finals, Melbourne Cup. Um, but I thought this horse would have had a, uh, a bit better prep. I think it's just been below par for me. I know it exploded in the Moody Valley Cup, but that was on a heavy track. Good three Saturday. I don't know. But I'm going to say a no from me. Um, number six, West Wind Blows, my favourite, Jamie Spencer, barrier two, $7. Interesting. I really liked um, this horse's run for our winter uh, over in Ascot, over 2,400 metres when it was second. Now... I thought the Turnbull run was absolutely amazing. Um, now, we don't usually say this, but hats off to Jamie Spencer for making the move mid-race, slow tempo, took it forward, and the horse had every reason under the sun just to say, with 100 to go, no, I'm cooked. You've burned all my tickets, but it held on. And that's what I saw over at Ascot as well. It actually started uh, it and the winner of that race, who I think was pole driver, they started putting a gap on the rest of the field with about 200 metres to go. So I think with a softer run here from Barry number two, I hope Jamie uh, doesn't need to think about it too much. Hopefully it jumps. It's probably in the first, call it six runners. From there, finds a inside run, peels out in the corner, and is able to hit the go button around about that 300 metre mark. If it does that, it does have a sustained sprint. And they're the type of horses that I want to be with in a Caulfield Cup. So for me, West Wind Blows will definitely be part of my consideration. Worm? Yeah. Um, to add to what you just said, I 100% agree. Um, it just can't be held up. It's got to be out and rolling and going through the gears. So wouldn't surprise me if this horse leads. Sets its own tempo with Jamie Spencer on board. Watched its last 2,400-metre race at Ascot. Went well against pile driver, A-grade European horse. Was a run. Uh, had a run in the Turnbull. Looked gone at the 200, but kept mm. grinding away. But what I loved about it, go and watch it through the line. It absolutely exploded. 2,400 will suit, can win. Uh, number seven, non-conformance, Harry Coffey, barrier 19. You can get $61. Yeah, mate, as mentioned in the speed map, I think Harry's got a decision to make. I, I think he's got a toe across if he wants to take it, and hopefully nonconformist can be exceptionally positive. I think if it does that, uh, then it can be finishing the first half of the race. I can't see nonconformist, based on what it's been doing, winning the Caulfield Cup. Worm? Uh, gave this horse a push in the might and power. I think it went horrible, so it's a no from me. Uh, number eight, Sulcum, Craig Williams, Barrier Six, and seven dollars fifty. Well, everything this horse does has been so exceptional since it got came to Australia. Uh, like first up in the Queen Elizabeth, wow, that was just impressive. Uh, really solid autumn prep, and it's had its perfect cups preparation. You, you kind of have a look at what it does though, um, and I, I wonder if it's got that turn of foot that it needs. Again, to have that sustained sprint across the last 300 metres. I just wonder whether it's got that within a Caulfield Cup. So for me, I think Solcombe definitely needs to be part of people's consideration. Uh, and if you do like it, I will not talk you out of it. I've got it in right about the fourth highest rated horse in the race, uh, based on what I've seen. So if you do like it, I won't talk you out of Solcombe. Um, but... Again, I, I probably see it kind of just off the placings, um, if not potentially in third. Worm? Nice. Um, it's had a good prep. You cannot say anything bad about this prep. Peaking for this, 
One thing we know, this horse will walk out of the barriers and will end up near last. Um, it's going to need a willow miracle from last. So I reckon they will try and cut the corner. If the gap appears, it can win. But I don't want to be back in a horse hoping on gaps that appear. Last start was huge, but it cut the corner, stayed to the inside. The run looked better than what it actually was. Willow's been cutting the corner of late on horses, and he's been getting it right every single time. I think this one, he gets it wrong, and it doesn't win. Um, feel free. Put him in the comments. I know I could be massive egg on my face, and I could be leaving the track absolutely seething at myself, but this is an opinion game, and um, I'm going to put my balls on the line here and take him on. Uh, number nine, Duke de Sessa. Johnny Allen, barrier 14. You can get Maddie $41. Mate, I thought it was a really good run at the Turnbull. Uh, went the long way. Um, didn't have any cover. And had a bit of interference on the corner as well. A bit of a bumping jaw with, can't remember where it was. But what, what I didn't necessarily like was it didn't have the acceleration that it needed to at that 300 meter mark. Uh, now, I expect that Mar and Hustis will definitely have improvement in this horse. But I don't necessarily have it uh, featuring within my top six selections in here. So I think Duke will definitely improve. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I probably can't steer you into it with too much confidence. Yeah. Uh, third up now, prep been okay. This horse is two from two on uh, 2,400 metres. So that is the tick for it. I feel the only positive for this horse, yeah, I, sorry. I think the 2,400 two from two is the only positive for the horse. Now, what I'm really finding negatives here, six to nine lengths off new energy and glory days. It'd be obviously $20 or 20s for our, for this race or the Cox Plate. So it's a no from me. Number 10, Who Yamal, Tim Clark, Barrier 8. You can get $17, Matty. Mm. Yeah, look, it ran in last year's Melbourne Cup and ran 12th. It um, wasn't actually a bad, bad run. And then from there, uh, from September, it's had three starts. So look, the, the horse is going okay. And obviously, it's last race against Montefilia, where Montefilia got it with 50 to go, was its best run. Um, at $16, again, it's, it's going to be around the mark. Or I just don't have it with those top horses in this field. So, again, who email, Barry number eight, Tim Clark, all positives there. I think you'll probably see this horse uh, finishing around midfield. Yep, coming out of the hill stakes for me, which isn't the form I want to be with. Wasn't given this horse in a, in a Melbourne Cup last year, so it's the same for the Caulfield Cup. No. Number 11, uh, right you are, Mick D, barrier 13. And you can get Matty $61. Mate, it's a really good autumn campaign. And I, I probably took a little bit more notice of this horse after the autumn campaign. I think it won the Mornington Cup to get itself into this field, didn't it? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, they're not the horses that I look for to be winning a Caulfield Cup. So for me, I think up in grade, it will be a challenge for right you are. Um, if they do win this, um, keep your eyes on the TV. These uh, owners will go off. They sure. are the, some of the best celebrations I've seen. Was there for Mornington Cup, and um, yeah, I was smiling from ear to ear of how good the celebrations were when they got the nod. Um, yeah, it's what horse racing is about. Seeing them celebrate. Uh, yeah, as you said, won the Mornington Cup to qualify. First up and second up, I thought they were really good runs and could easily have finished in the placings for the Caulfield Cup off those runs. But last start, I think it was a touch disappointing. If you can forgive it, then chuck it in your try and first fours. But I think it might go in my extended first four. Uh, number 12, Emissary, Joy McNeil, barrier four. You can get $126. $126 for the horse that won the Geelong Cup and then came second in the Melbourne Cup last year. Mm. Yeah, look, I, I haven't seen enough um, of that form uh, since it's come back, so I will let it go around here. Uh, yep. I Jockey thought it had an issue last start. 
you don't want to be hearing that going into this. Uh, no. Number 13, Goldman. Linda Meach, barrier 18. You can get $91. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll look, I expect Goldman to be going forward. Um, yeah, look, oh, it's well up in class here, and I, I can't make a case for Goldman, so no for me. Yeah, uh, not going anywhere near that Roy Higgins win where Sulkin was second. Uh, you don't want to be having a prep like this going into it, and it's a no from me. Number 14, Akita Sushi. Kira McAvoy, barrier 12, you can get $17. Hmm. Interesting, this one. Um, well, I'll, I'll let you tell us about its overseas form. I think it's going to shape up quite well over the 2,400 metres. And Kira McAvoy being on board... I know I wanted to be with the Joseph O'Brien stable with whatever they bought out. So I think you've got to show a ton of respect. And what did you say the odds were around 31s? Uh, 17s. 17s. Okay. Well, there's definitely been some money for it because when I did this, I was paying 31s. Um, I, th I think you, it's probably the biggest unknown horse. I've probably got two unknowns, and we'll get to the second one, but this is probably one of the biggest unknowns that I, I have around this race. So probably keen, Worm, to hear your thoughts around its international form. Yeah, this is one I couldn't get my head around, mate. Um, it just... It's come out of nowhere. Like, it, it's... It's had three starts at 2,400 for two wins. So that's the biggest tick you can have for me. It's two wins have been on synthetic. One of them has been on synthetic. And then it came to Ascot over 2,400 metres and won like a good horse against some okay horses. Two horses have uh, won from that race. But then went to the Curra, uh two months later, and that was the Irish St. Ledger trial, I think, group three. Um, it was disappointing. So... It might be thriving, and if there's any signs of it thriving in Melbourne, I think you've got to put it in, but I'm going to leave it out. Just, I yeah, can't trust that um, form at the moment. Uh, number 15, Fame, Craig Newitt, Barrier 16. I think you can get close to $201. Mm. For the horse that ran second behind Kovalika, uh, up in the Queensland Derby, and he said Kovalika was going to be uh, what in the market. Yeah, yep. Look, I, I think handicap conditions will obviously suit this horse. What's it running around with? 51 kilos. Yep. Um, third up tick. I expect it to get back and run on. Uh, probably hasn't shown me enough to be up with the with the top five horses in this race. So expecting Fame to run a, a cheeky race, but uh, yeah, not not enough to be on the podium. Uh, yeah, the what has done this prep, I uh, can't really get excited about. Forgot you came out of its run last start and it went horrible in the might and power last week. So it's a fat no from me. Uh, number 16, Boyos the agent, um, Winona Costin. And barrier three, and you can get $151. Mm, yeah, I won't be touching the 151 for Boys the Agent. Nothing well, else to it. <laughs> no, nah, look at it. Lower group racing. Oh, I don't have been up to these, so we'll get your thoughts. Uh, now, if punders are looking for a roughie, here it is. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Stay with me. Stay with me. Um, uh, yeah, so 151s, um, put it in your tries, put it in your first fours. This will run a cheeky race. Two starts ago, three lengths off military miss mission, who beat up Carini last start, who people were tipping this for a Caulfield Cup before that run. Then last start uh, in the Metrop, it was a hidden run because it was unlucky, was held up for a while. 
And it was hitting the line hard the last 50. So this horse will be in all my tries and first fours. Number 17, Spirit Ridge, Dean Yendel, um, Barrier 10. I just hope this horse wins so we can get another beautiful uh, post-race interview from Dean Yendel. Absolutely. Look, um, really good run in the Metrop just behind, just fine. Uh, really consistent Spirit Ridge. I, I've been very impressed with the way Annabelle Nation has been placing this horse. Again, I just don't know whether that winter preparation is what I'm after for a Caulfield Cup winner. So for that reason, I'm quite happy to look past Spirit Ridge. Again, it, it, it'll probably be leading, if not second, third, and it'll be in the race with 200 metres to go. I, I just think there's going to be some behind it that'll get a better run. Yeah. Um. So this is, again, for me, punters, if you're looking for a roughie, here's the other one, $41. Um. It has the same form lines and went better than Boyce the Agent. Um, and you're getting half of the price or th three times the price. Um, but it'll be going in all in my tries and first fours as well. We'll be right up there and running. And if there's a biased advantage, it could be in it for a long, long way. Number 18, Valiant King, Jamie Carr, Barrier 1, $12. Uh, one of the only notes I had here is... Listen to what Worm has to say. <laughs> um, yes, anything else you want to add? <laughs> oh, mate, honestly, with 50 kilos, Jamie Carr on board, barrier number one, this thing could shoot the gates and be in the top couple. If it does that, um, look, it, it's got to be a chance for running top five. has to be. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it runs top one. Um, yeah, three-year-old in European season still, so that's why we're getting the low weight. Um, very excited about this horse. This is the one horse I can't wait to see on Saturday. Brings a one-and-a-half one length second to the Melbourne Cup favourite, Vauban, before it jumped on the plane. I thought it was really strong. I suggest you take the price now because this will shorten to single figures. If this horse brings its form from last start, it will win this race. It will sit on pace. It's a genuine chance. I'm bloody excited. Bring on Saturday. Um, 19, United Nations. Carleen Heppel, Barrier 17, $81. Uh, don't expect it to be in the first half of the field if it does get a start. Uh, yeah, just a no from me. Uh, $100 betting strategy, Matty. What are you doing? Right. Well, I'm going to keep this simple, but I will also give you the two in the field that I will be watching because uh, I think that they're the two value in the field. For the $100, I'll be putting 70 of my 100 onto Westwind Lowe's at $8 to win 560. I'll be putting 30. The remaining 30 on Montefilia at 14 to win 420. Now, Montefilia may have sucked me back in like it did last year, but I think the horse has got upside on the hill stakes from a few weeks back. So for that reason, I'm really quite interested to see how Montefilia does run. The, the two, I know Montefilia's at double uh, digits, but the two I thought outside of that that I'm really quite interested to see how they run and I can have something on Okita Sushi. Oh, he's dropped out. Waiting. Here he comes. Punners. You got us, Matty? Got you. He's yep. back. All right, where'd you leave me? Uh, you were talking about Akita Sushi. Oh, he's gone again. That's all right. I'll continue on. Um, $100 betting strategy for me. Um, I'm going to have two. I'm going to have 60 on West Wind Blows at $7. And I'm going to have $30 on Valiant King at $14. So both of them to win 420 My remaining $10, 
I'm going to have a trifecta for 41%. I'm going to have West Wind Blows to win with uh, Valiant King, Spirit Ridge, and Boris D Agent, all in a box trifecta for 41%. Uh, Matty, your final, th- you were talking about uh, Okita Sushi. Okita Sushi, you, you said it was around about $18. Yeah, yep. yep. Okay, yeah, I think again that around twenty dollars. I think is a good play for a small pl- uh, small bet, and the other one is who you mail. I think that's got improvement as well. So West Wind Blows will be the main play. Montefilia, that's how I'm spending the hundred, and who you mail and Okita Sushi for yeah. some value. Yeah, hopefully, uh, let us know what you're thinking, Caulfield Cup guys. Love to get engaged with you and uh, see what your thoughts are. Great race, probably the one of the better fields we've seen in some time. So can't wait. Cracking field. All right. Bets around the grounds, Matty. If uh, punters don't like our Caulfield Cup bets, where else can they play on Saturday? All right. We'll stick at Caulfield for the time being. We'll head to race number five and we'll go Inhibitions, which is around about that $5 mark at the moment. J-Mac on board, stepping up to the 1,400 metres. Now, this horse has raced against a lot of these before, um, finished in front of them. Uh, and that's really the only form one I'd like to follow in this race. But my play in this race will be a one by four. I think $2 the place is a smart play. So inhibitions, $5 and $2 the place. We'll race six at Caulfield. Uh, Spacewalk. Now, we've backed this horse before, and it was a comfortable first up win at Warwick Farmworm. Uh, now, this is a slightly tougher assignment that if this horse does want to get into group racing and win a group race, it's not going to get an easier opportunity than here. I, I think it'll be getting back in the field and coming home hard. General Bow, I think, will be the one that pushes forward on the fence, potentially sitting one back. If it does get the split, I think it's a danger. But Spaceball, around right about that $283 mark, I think it's a fairly good play. When we'll head up to Sydney, Ramwick race number eight, we'll be going Coteal. Now, this horse, uh, look, this race, I should say, has got a lot of horses <laughs> that haven't lived up to expectations this preparation. <laughs> A lot of horses that you backed, a lot of horses I backed. So, but I think Coteal is the one in the race that um, should definitely be in the finish. Now, again, similar to inhibitions, I think that five dollars and two dollars a place is a smart play. So, I think inhibitions and Coteal, both the place, both at two dollars. I think you uh, you should be having a collect with both of those two. Yep, nice. Um... I don't have any around the grounds because I need more time, but it was two horses that interest me at okay. Ramwick. Yep. One of them was Blue Illusions in the two-year-old race. Now, we, we were heavily back in this in first up. Clearly, something went wrong, but you would have thought you'd put it out. So why is he gone again with his horse? So it must be showing something what we've seen has to be true to the eye. You're now getting seven dollars for it, um, and a lot of things I hear about two-year-olds. Once they have one start, they improve off that. So the mark has been quite generous. I think we've got to go again at seven dollars. Um, I just need more time to review the other jump outs before I uh, get involved. The other one, race five, uh, number twelve, uh, com commemorative. Oh, I can put you that. This horse I backed first start, Canterbury. J Mac on board, one by 4.86. Now, this was a win and a half off some jump outs. Now, do I want to take around the $2 mark? There's no way. Um, I want to see this before I do anything. I've heard James Cummings put the slows on this horse. So. I just want to see it before I believe it. But if it brings what it did first up at uh, Canterbury, uh, yeah, it will absolutely brain these. But, yeah, I'm a bit uh, scared of diving in $2 since what I've heard. Uh, That's right. Five, number 12, commemorative. There we go. At least you can pronounce it because I'm a dead set. There we go. Um, yeah, they're the two. They're watches for me. Just want to have a look at them before I dive in. 
Um, multi Matty, I'm only going to chuck one in. I'm going to um, be very ballsy here with this price. Caulfield race two, Riff Rocket, a dollar forty. We're going to take the win. That is my only one I'm putting in. Um, what about you? What are you chucking in? Wow, <laughs> Riff Rocket, this guy. <laughs> Tell you what, uh, mate, we will be going the two I mentioned, Inhibitions and Coteal, both for the place, both paying $2. Yep, beauty, that comes to $5.60. I just want to get us off the mark, Matty, um, just hit it down the fine leg and uh, take the single and uh, push them over to you to face the next two balls and we'll be right, five sixty. dollars Chick-ching. Um, pineapple of the week. Um. This was tough. This is a tough meeting. I, I don't think it's as easy as we um, thought it would be, uh, maybe because of last week's um, bloodbath of what the meeting gave us. But I was thinking Riff Rocket at $1.40. I thought that might have been value for the punters, but I just didn't uh, want to cop uh, any uh, feedback. So I'm going to go to race seven, Caulfield. Number two, Skew Whiff. Um, was a late scratching at the barriers as it's a nut case when it gets in there. This horse was sent back to the jump outs and handled it quite well, won the jump out nicely. This horse has come across from New Zealand where it beat Legato, who is a favourite for the Golden Eagle. Now, if you go and watch the replay, 200 to home, it looked 200 from home. It looked absolutely home. You couldn't have enough on, but it just got to the line but I think this is a very nice horse. Looks a good horse. Now to this race, we're rated 108. Next best is 102, and we meet at a level weight. After that, they are basically benchmark 90 horses with only a three kilo advantage. Barrier two finds the rail. Should be very, very hard to beat at around $4, I think it is. We might haven't spent much time on this race, but... Oof, you may have found one. Mm. I do like when they come over from New Zealand with those type of ratings. Yep. Um, yeah, we've found a few like that previously. So ooh, I like that. Have a closer look. Yep, not a problem. Uh, any final thoughts, Matty, on a cracking Caulfield Cup? Uh, no. I, sorry, mate. I think it is an absolute cracking Caulfield Cup. Um, but no, I... No further thoughts. Fingers crossed we both have a collect. Yep, that's it, mate. Uh, can't wait. Um, we'll be back next week for Cox Plate. We'll probably do a runner-by-runner runner on that as well. Um, yeah, Friday night racing as well. So we've got a lot to get cracking into during the week. Um, hopefully you find plenty of winners. Please get involved on the socials, in the comments. Love to get involved with you guys. More importantly, hopefully you fill your pockets up and we fill them up even more. Have a great weekend and we will touch base next Thursday night for Cox Plate.